Hey y'all, so I am Samantha. Thank y'all for tuning in and I will try my best to get straight to the point effective like now because I know how people just talk and talk and talk and not get to the point, okay? So um, all my life really, or since I was like a child, raised in a Baptist-like church, um, for the most part went to church, I don't know about every single Sunday, but mo majority of the time. And I went to a camp called Discovery Camp in Columbus, Texas when I was about I want to say 12 years old going on 13 i think my birthday was maybe the next week or two gave my life to christ i believe on july 3rd or 4th of that year and essentially it was a friend of mine portia she was like hey we should go to this concert and then i was like uh, okay i'll go it's the last day of the camp go there the girl's like hey you want to speak another language and i don't know where i start speaking in tongues so i'm like what is this because Growing up, like when people speak in tongues, I see them faint. And I'm like, what kind of nonsense is this, right? So I go there and everything's amazing. And I'm like, I can't give my life to Christ. So excited. And I don't know what the next step is because at the time, you ain't really know. Like, what is a 12-year-old supposed to know? And um, of course, a lot of people can say a lot. But I didn't have that kind of, um, I guess, accessibility to know, like, what is the next steps. So time goes by. And already, I've never been the kind of person to really just like fall into peer pressure. Um, if things happen with other friends in terms of getting breakups with guys and stuff, like I learned from them. I, I don't have to put myself in that same position. Like if you were to say, hey, you want to fall off a chimney or a, what's the thing called a bridge? I'm not going to want to fall off the bridge. You know, like if you know you can't swim, you go into a pool, you can drown. I'm not about to take that chance. So I learned from people's experiments. Going to high school, uh, for the most part, I would say I played a lot of things safe, and I still kind of do. And when I would go to church, so we went to a, another kind of church. It was more um, African or Nigerian based, and nothing was wrong with that at all. But when I was in the church, it was just like for children's church, they didn't really do the word. Like, yes, people are over here teaching us of the word, but the people around me, like my peers, all they care about is looking cute, taking pictures. They're not even paying attention. They're forced there. And I'm over here like I genuinely want to learn. But it gets to the point where like your child growing up and when you see that people your age are not even putting an effort to actually get to understand what's going on or what they're being taught, it's a turn off because you're like, I don't want to be the only one doing this and not having support. Like, I don't know who to talk to. So for the longest, I really felt like I was doing this lifestyle myself in terms of even I guess following rules because a lot of times you hear okay well you shouldn't do this shouldn't do that should do this ten commandments this and that but it was like when people say relationship or religion this was more religion of relationship like I was taught you know um, I, I guess by the teachers that taught children's church oh you can't do this smoking weed is bad for you um, all these other things but I will say there's this one girl who's a friend of mine and at the church I went to at the time, she was so raw and authentic. And I love that about her. She is like that. And she would tell about her life story and how she grew up in the church and stole money from the church, things like that. But God still delivered. And she was not the kind of person to dress up like a nun or anything like, you can't see me uh, head to toe, I'm clothed, I don't put makeup on, none of that. Like she was just herself. And I love that because to me, it made me seem like, or it it helped me realize like you can look however you'd like and still be accepted into God's kingdom. I guess growing up too, there's a stereotype like, oh my gosh, this person's super tatty or um, oh, this person smokes weed heavily. So people would like judge them, you know? And I never thought that was right. So when I saw how she even had like a tattoo and she could do like, she she loved God. And I think that when you're looking at people's lifestyle, you have to see the fruit that they're bearing. Fast forward, go to college, don't know, you know, like the college life, what that's gonna bring. And I remember I told the same girl, I was like, I'm gonna pretend I'm from London and I'm a foreign exchange student. It was the dumbest thing ever. I ain't even do it though. And she was like, why? And I was like, well, I just want to feel like accepted and be unique and stuff. But I think for me, it was just the fact that I did not see anyone immediately that was like me in the sense like, OK, yeah, I'm black. But someone who displays their love for God, too. And it's hard. Like, 
I made my mistakes. I, I'm not going to sit here and act as if I don't make mistakes and I don't sin because I do. Um, but it's just like sometimes you want to have that accountability partner. Like you just want to be your authentic self. And for the longest, like until maybe 2016, 17, I, I didn't feel like I had that. I will say to go back, there was this time where, you know, I guess the moment I realized God is real. So I said, I gave my life to Christ around 12 to 13 or 13 years old. So I remember my dad got a call that my grandma wasn't doing well. And I was scared because I was like, I've never met this lady. Um, you know, I don't want anything to happen to her. I don't want her to lose her life or anything. So I remember I was in the garage and I was coming out. And I was like, God, I don't know if you can hear me. These might not be my bad exact words. I was like, I don't know if you can hear me, God, but um, please heal her. Like, I don't want anything to happen to my family. I don't want us to cry over things. Like, I don't want us to mourn. And everything was fine. So I was like, oh, this man's real. Like, okay. So we're going to go back to 2016. Okay. And 2016, something happened early that year. And I was left by myself. So, of course, in college, I didn't join any, like, Christian-based organizations, but I did join, like, regular, like, fun social leadership organizations. I was a pretty well-rounded person, still am. And um, during this time, I remember I felt like I was alone. I was in my house, and I, for two days straight, was crying. For two days straight, did not eat. And in that moment, it was like, yes, my family's here, and I know they care, but I didn't even feel like I had, like I didn't know how to communicate what I was feeling to them. And as a result, all I had was to run to God. I'm like, God, why'd you put me in this situation? Why did this happen? Why are friends turning against me? Like, what is this? And for me, it was a time for God to truly like bring me down and then resurrect me. You know, like he had to, to help me to see that I don't need companionship and friendship to validate me, but rather I need that from him who's my source. And that's not to say to isolate yourself because company is good. God made us ha to have company, but it's the fact that I was looking for all the right things in all the wrong places. Sorry about that noise. It's, it's door slamming. So we go and I remember, I think maybe February or March and I was, going to a meeting around 7 p.m. in campus. And out of nowhere, God's like, do you trust me? And I'm like, I mean, I guess, yes, hello. <laughs> and of course, the voice might not be audibly. Like The way God speaks to me is, of course, through people or certain confirmations, but also I can randomly start having conversations to myself that I know it's not me because I can't control what I say. It might be weird, but it, I don't do this like in public. So even if I did, oh well. So anyway, God is like, you, what, what, what's going to happen next is going to cost you friends. It's going to cost you friendships, but I need you to be able to trust me and, be a, and have a friend in me. And I'm like, okay. So I kid you not, for that good time being, maybe, I don't know how long it was. I don't want to lie to y'all. I was just in my word. Um super sold to God again. And I say again, because like I said, for, for a time, I didn't really, like I, I, I did the things that Christians do, but I didn't have that relationship with God. So, okay, what, what really got me on this wave were some YouTubers, because I didn't know, like I said, I didn't have, like, even though I had friends, they like, I didn't feel like I could be myself with them. And myself is rooted in Christ. So it's like, how can I talk about all this? I don't know what this person's wearing and all this just nonsense gossip, honestly, and not even tell you the root of who I am and feel like if I am, you're to mock me. And these are thoughts I believe that the devil puts in our minds because with, you know, like there's strength in numbers and God has created everyone in a certain way to, to play a role in their destiny. And he aligns you with certain people at a certain time. So had I actually spoken out loud, I'm pretty sure I would have had the right community. But I take it back, too, because um, the community that was evident on my college campus were not people who were like me. And I say that like, OK, yes, physically, we can be like same skin tone or similar, whatever, come from the same area of town. But 
they weren't like how am I going to say this? So I, I like fashion. I like dressing up. I like makeup. I like wearing different wigs and stuff like that. And the people that are Christian, for the most part that I knew of at that point, they, they, they didn't do that. It was like, they're boring. I'm like, look, fam, I don't know about y'all, but the God I know so far, I can be myself. I don't have to like strip away things that are part of me to fit into this Christian group. And um, I will say, though, I do have a video from like maybe over a year ago um, down, if you look at my video list, where I talk about how makeup killed me, my testimony. And that was because I was looking for the wrong things in the wrong places. So it's like you can have these things, but don't make this your identity. Like, don't idolize these things. So later on, I go ahead and I start praying. I listen to certain YouTubers, Ashley Empowers. Miss Naturally Mary, to uh, name a few. And I believe during this time I saw Michael Todd's, Pastor Michael Todd's relationship series. So I tuned in and everything was great. Everything was great. I think for sure for me, last year, so 2019 was probably my worst year spiritually, but it was my best year because God showed himself to me. And I say that because I started to actually get out of my comfort zone and connect with people. So with the church that I attend, they have this thing or this uh, curriculum called freedom. So I was part of this freedom group. And at the end, God was like, you will be in the wilderness for 40 days. And I'm like, what does that mean? And I think he took me to that. Either it's Matthew 4 and Luke 4 or something like that. I'll put it in here. And it was about Jesus in the wilderness and the devil tempting him. And literally that happened. I can go into, actually, I will go into detail more about that in another video because I think that's also important to share in terms of like what we go through in this, in this lifestyle that we have adapted. And honestly, if anyone was to ask me like what got me through during 2019, I would say definitely God, because there were times where I'm not going to lie. Like I remember picking up my phone to look at a Bible plan about suicide and loneliness. And yeah, you could say, okay, as a Christian, shouldn't you know that this stuff is not what God wants for you, but times get hard. Like, it, it's not even about this, how am I gonna say this? Things could look great, but we're real people. And we have flesh and we are human and we have emotions and feelings and God made them for a reason. And knowing that, I think about how I am now and how I was before and I wouldn't trade this experience for anything. It's through um, being committed to God where I've gained great friends, lifelong friends who are family. It's through God that I'm able to stand in my truth. It's through God that I'm able to be bold and know that I have a purpose. It's Him that it's through him that I'm able to have true joy. It's through him that I'm able to acquire jobs and acquire certain schooling um, in terms of education. It's through him. So it's like through him that a lot of these things come. And I feel like a lot of times what turns people off is the fact that they're not able to relate to somebody but honestly if it wasn't for god and if it wasn't for me like actively and that's the thing like he's not going to force himself on you he's going to make himself present to you but you have to seek him and like he will open those doors so if it wasn't for god let me tell you my sins will not be pardoned I probably, like, sometimes I think, would I be as strong as I am right now? No. I could have gotten into some serious trouble. Um, there was a time where I was so addicted to alcohol, it didn't even make sense. Like, I was so addicted. I think I have, actually, I do have a, a video about my drinking testimony in this um, channel, too. But now I don't need that, you know? There's a lot of times I feel like we look for these, these, um, man-made things to fulfill our needs we look for these temporary things to fulfill our needs and if we just give him a try i think for me my biggest thing or one of my hardest challenges in this walk is just like feeling like i have someone to connect to because as humans we know we have the source but sometimes you know not sometimes all the time we see community we see community, whether it's through social media, whether it's friendship or whether it's by meeting somebody and just talking to them because we get lonely and God's giving that community to me. So I think this really targeted most of the, the key points. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be free or I would love to answer them for you. Email me, call me, beat me if you want to reach me. Um, 
But for the most part, that's that. For me, what I will leave you guys off with, because I don't want this to be longer than 20 minutes unless the Lord says so, is in this journey of yours, don't care about what people think about you. Because if you care about what people think, you're not going to be able to step into the abundant life that God has for you. If you care too much about what people think, you're not going to experience true freedom. A lot of us have chains that are attached to us. A lot of us are bound to generational curses and generational cycles that are destructive to us and to our futures and to our family and to future generations. But if we surrender that and just say, God, I know about you, I've heard of you, I'm going to try you. I'm pretty sure he'll make his face shine upon you and shine to you, not physically, but in a way. And um, if you want to know, like, how do I get to that point? What do I do? Uh, how does this look like? Like, what do I know? I, I can for sure um, be of resource to you. But there's times where, you know, you've hit a rock and you're just like, how do I get up? And, and in those darkest times where you're isolated, where you have no one to turn to, he's there, you know. So, uh, yes, that's my story. That is my story so far. I'm loving it. I know I'm leaving a lot of things out, but I can't really pinpoint what they are exactly because, I, like I said, I love to tell detail, but I'm trying to be as broad yet detailed as I can for the sake of the duration of this, okay? Um, so, for sure, give God a try. And, oh, another thing. This is one big thing I have to put in this video, okay, for you guys. I sought human validation. Sought so much human validation where I was such a people pleaser. And one day, I have this in one of my videos here. God was like, are you living for them or are you living for me? And when I saw that scripture, I thought about it. Man hurts. Like, man and woman, they hurt you. They can build you up. They can break you down. Their word is not final. Men and women have flaws. So you have to think about it. Am I about to let a person who is broken like me with damaged goods tell me what to do and control me? Or am I going to find that um, love and that reality and that truth in the person who made them and me and the entire world because he has the whole world in his hands okay so think about that like when we stop allowing things or people to hold us captive as well as thoughts there's something beautiful on the other side so uh yes i love you jesus loves you we love you i'm ready for you and like i said if you have any questions that i did not cover or topics you want to know feel free to leave it in the comments I was going to say DM me, but you can email me at samanthadspeaks at gmail.com. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye.